Hello and welcome to today's Trade Radiators video. We are in a shed today and it's very cold as you can see from my breath but we're going to have a quick look at thermostatic radiator valves otherwise known as TRVs. We're going to have a look at how they work, how you install them and where you should install them. So let's go now. So then, what does a thermostatic radiator valve actually do? Well, it's designed to automatically adjust the amount of hot water coming into a radiator according to the temperature in the room, not according to the temperature in the radiator, which is a common misconception we'll get to in a minute. How they do that is really simple. You have your heating flow coming up from the boiler in either a copper pipe or a plastic pipe or whatever the plumber's installed. Here's your nut. You'll have a valve seat like this, then either a pin that can move up and down within the valve, which in turn can allow water into your radiator. So at the moment, what we're looking at really is just a standard valve. We have the pin here with either a rubber or a copper taper on it, and at the valve seat there, we have flow coming up from the boiler. According to if the pin is pushed down, there'll be no water coming into the rad, or if it's lifted up slightly, there will be water going into the radiator. So how does a thermostatic radiator valve actually automatically adjust where that pin is? Well, it's very easy. On top of this you'll have the thermostatic part of the radiator. This is the plastic bit that you twist that has numbers on the sides that correlate to how hot you want the room to be. Usually they have a very responsive metal that as it gets hot and cold will expand and contract. The hotter something is, the more it expands, and the colder it is, the more it will contract. Similarly, other thermostatic radiator valves will use a small wax canister that as that gets warm, the wax will expand and push down. Now let's have a look at the simpler version, which is a metal coil. So our metal coil is inside here. So according to the temperature you want in the room, when you open and close the radiator valve, this whole body will either move slightly up or slightly down. What happens is when the room is cold, this spring will contract and allow this jumper to lift up and allow hot water into the radiator, warming the radiator up and therefore warming the room up. When the room is hot, the metal spring will expand and exert pressure on the radiator pin here, shutting this valve and then stopping any flow going into the radiator. As you can see, it's a really, really simple way of automating the amount of heat that goes in and out of a radiator according to the temperature in the room. Now, this is where we get to a problem that we found about how people actually use their thermostatic radiator valves. Imagine you go into a room and it is cold. You feel the radiator itself and the radiator is hot. That means that the thermostatic radiator valve knows that the room is cold and it has got the radiator on to try and heat it up. What a lot of people will then do is they'll look at the numbers on the side of the radiator valve and it will say something like 3 out of 10. And what they'll do, because the room is cold, they'll turn the radiator valve up to 10 and that means it will never shut down. Because the biggest reason you're going to fit one of these is to save money on your heating bills. That's why you have them. And if you go into a room that's cold and the radiator's hot and the valve is working properly and you turn it up to 10, it's never going to shut down that radiator and you'll never save any money. Now let's have a look at the different types of thermostatic radiator valve you can get and how you'd actually install them on a radiator. So then we're going to use this old radiator here to show you how you can actually install a thermostatic radiator valve on a radiator. Now often you'll either be replacing an old faulty one or you'll be taking off an old lock shield to try and update the efficiency of your heating system. Now a lot of the time you'll have a normal spigot that you'll be able to slacken the nut off and then pop your radiator valve on as easy as you like. But we're going to show you the slightly difficult way here because a lot of the time you'll have these old imperial radiator inserts that are a bit more difficult to do. I'll show you the other type in a minute though. So what you'll need here is a special tool and what you'll actually do is you'll get inside the hex, you don't grab on the outside and you can use your tool here to actually remove this old insert. Sometimes you'll need a little bit of help from an adjustable spanner. Now we can install our new thermostatic radiator valve. All we do is we unpack the thermostatic radiator head and put that to one side, we don't need that yet, and we remove the radiator valve itself. There is the spigot that we can actually install in the radiator. If you look closely before we continue, you'll see that this radiator has the pin on it that we were talking about a minute ago. Hopefully now you'll be able to see when I push up and down on the pin, you can actually see the valve body going up and down inside and that's what stops the flow coming in and out. So the next thing we do is we either use PTFE or a hemp and paste to seal up the thread for about 10 turns. Once you put it on, just smooth it in and then insert it into the radiator and then use your adjustable spanner 
to tighten it up. Now you'll see inside here we have a nut and olive compression fitting on here and also a nut and olive compression fitting on the bottom. Also take note of the fact that there is an arrow pointing down here and also down here. That denotes that this particular radiator valve is what we call a universal radiator valve. That means you can put it on the flow or the return of the radiator which makes it easier for people who don't know which is the flow and the return on the rad. They can put this on either end and it won't matter. We'll put this on here then we need a pair of grips and adjustable spanner to tighten it up. The same goes for the 15mm pipe that goes underneath. Pop that into the bottom of your radiator valve and then tighten that up. Now that that's on, all we need to do is make sure that the thermostatic radiator valve is open to maximum. Pop it on, make sure it clicks down. Then use the collar thread to screw the thermostatic radiator head to the valve. Make sure that this is facing the user. Now you have automatic adjustment for the temperature in the room. Take a look at the instructions and you'll find that the maximum temperature on this radiator valve is a room temperature of 28 degrees, while star correlates to a temperature of 7 degrees. There are loads of different types of thermostatic radiator valve on the market. You can get chrome headed ones like the one we've just seen and also right angled ones like the one we've just seen, otherwise known as a 90. You can get straight TRVs where the body is straight through like that. Make a note on the fact of these that they only have one arrow on them, so the flow has to go through that way. So you'll need to know what the flow is going through your radiator. But these are lovely going up into the bottom of radiators or coming in at the side. And they also look really good with a corresponding lock shield that's nice and straight with also a chrome head on it. And also you can get my personal favorite, the angled thermostatic radiator valve. So if you have a radiator on the wall like so, you can just have your pipe sticking out and going straight into the side of the radiator like that. These are really cool and I like these a lot and they look really nice and neat when you're doing a new installation. Make sure whenever you're buying a new thermostatic radiator valve that you consider whether you need a new lock shield or not. We find it prudent that every time you change a radiator valve it's best to change the other end as well. So make sure that you buy a lock shield to go with your radiator valve. I hope you found today's trade radiators video helpful and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks very much. Bye bye.